In a small town nestled deep within the countryside, where gossip was the lifeblood of every resident, the year 2002 brought an incident that would forever be remembered as the most scandalous and devastating event the community had ever witnessed. The town was a tight-knit place where everyone knew each other's business and secrets had a way of unraveling with alarming speed. But no one could have predicted the volcanic eruption of drama that would unfold at what was supposed to be the most joyous of celebrations, a wedding. The couple at the center of this tale was Jennifer and Mark. Jennifer was a striking woman in her late twenties, known for her beauty and charm, while Mark was a respected businessman who had inherited his family's successful hardware store. Their courtship had been the stuff of romantic novels. They met at a community fair, locked eyes across the crowd, and, as the story went, fell madly in love. To the outside world, their relationship seemed perfect, almost enviable, they were the quintessential golden couple of the town. Their upcoming wedding, the most anticipated social event of the year. Invitations were sent to everyone who mattered, ensuring a turnout that would make it the talk of the town for years. But beneath the surface, all was not as it seemed. Jennifer, for all her outward sweetness, had been harboring a dark secret. For months leading up to the wedding, she had been entangled in a torrid affair with none other than Mark's father, Richard. Richard, a man of charisma and wealth, was well into his fifties, but still carried an air of sophistication and allure that many found irresistible. He was a widower, having lost his wife several years earlier and had a reputation as a bit of a rogue. Despite the age difference and the clear immorality of their actions, Jennifer and Richard's affair was intense and fueled by a dangerous cocktail of lust and secrecy. Mark, blissfully unaware of the betrayal, had been pouring his heart and soul into preparing for the wedding. He wanted everything to be perfect for Jennifer, whom he believed was the love of his life. The venue was a grand, old-world-style estate on the outskirts of town, with sprawling gardens and ornate decorations. The guest list was extensive, including family, friends, and influential figures from neighboring towns. Mark had spared no expense, ensuring the day would be unforgettable. Little did he know how true that would turn out to be. As the wedding day approached, whispers began to circulate. Nothing concrete, just the kind of vague insinuations that tend to spread in small communities. Some claimed they had seen Jennifer and Richard in compromising situations. Others dismissed the rumors as malicious gossip. Mark's best friend, David, was one of the few who took the rumors seriously. He had always been protective of Mark and had noticed Jennifer's occasional glances and subtle flirtations with Richard at family gatherings. Determined to uncover the truth, David began quietly investigating, piecing together snippets of information until he stumbled upon undeniable evidence. A videotape. The tape, which David discovered tucked away in a hidden compartment in Richard's study, contained footage that was both damning and explicit. It showed Jennifer and Richard in the throes of their affair, their actions leaving no room for doubt about their betrayal. Shocked and furious, David wrestled with what to do. He knew the information would devastate Mark, but felt he had no choice but to reveal the truth. The night before the wedding, David confronted Mark and showed him the tape. Mark was utterly destroyed. The woman he adored and the father he respected had conspired to humiliate and betray him in the worst possible way. But as the initial waves of pain and anger subsided, Mark's thoughts turned cold and calculating. Rather than cancel the wedding and confront Jennifer and Richard directly, he devised a plan. A public reckoning that would ensure neither of them would escape unscathed. 
The wedding day dawned bright and clear, the perfect backdrop for what everyone expected to be a beautiful ceremony. Guests arrived dressed in their finest attire, chatting excitedly as they took their seats. The oversized wedding brido, Jennifer was radiant in her wedding gown, her smile wide and confident as she greeted her bridesmaids. Richard, too, seemed in high spirits, mingling with guests and playing in the proud father. Mark, on the other hand, was unusually composed, his demeanor calm and almost detached. Few noticed the simmering storm beneath his surface. The ceremony proceeded without incident, the couple exchanging vows in a picturesque garden setting. But it was during the reception that Mark's plan came to fruition. As the newlyweds and their guests gathered in the grand ballroom for the evening festivities, Mark took to the stage to deliver what everyone assumed would be a heartfelt speech. Instead, he began by thanking everyone for coming and expressing his gratitude for their support. Then, with a chilling smile, he announced he had a special surprise for Jennifer, a video montage showcasing their love story. The lights dimmed and the projector flickered to life. At first, the screen showed innocent footage of the couple, laughing at the fair, dancing at a party, sharing quiet moments together. But then the scenes abruptly shifted. The room fell silent as the explicit footage of Jennifer and Richard filled the screen. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the crowd, followed by stunned silence. Jennifer froze, her face draining of color, while Richard's expression turned to one of explosive burning glass. For the first time in history, the room fell silent as the zone just fired. Mark stood at the edge of the stage, his arms crossed, watching the chaos unfold. What happened next remains the subject of much speculation. Accounts vary, but it is universally agreed that the events took a violent turn. Richard attempted to flee the room, but was confronted by an enraged Mark. A physical altercation ensued, with punches thrown and furniture overturned. Jennifer, meanwhile, was overwhelmed by a mix of shame and fear, retreating to a corner as the scene spiraled out of control. Some guests tried to intervene, while others fled the room, not wanting to be caught in the mail. In the Chowess, a tragic accident occurred. Richard, in his haste to escape, stumbled and fell against a heavy marble table, hitting his head. The impact was fatal, and he died almost instantly. The room erupted in screams as guests realized what had happened. Mark, still consumed by rage, was restrained by several attendees, his shouts echoing through the hall. Jennifer, hysterical, was escorted out by her bridesmaids, her once perfect day reduced to a nightmare. The aftermath of the incident was a whirlwind of police investigations, media frenzy and shattered lives. Mark was arrested and faced charges of manslaughter, though many in the community sympathized with his actions, given the circumstances. Jennifer left town shortly after, unable to face the judgment and scorn of those who once admired her. The scandal forever tainted the memory of the wedding, turning what should have been a joyous occasion into a cautionary tale of betrayal and retribution. To this day, the story is whispered about in the town, a grim reminder of how quickly love can turn to hatred and how secrets, no matter how deeply buried, have a way of coming to light. As the days turned into weeks, the small town struggled to recover from the seismic fallout of that fateful wedding day. The hardware store, once a bustling center of the community and Mark's pride, now stood shuttered and abandoned. Mark's arrest and subsequent trial became the focal point of public discourse, eclipsing all other events. People who once held him in high regard debated whether his actions, though extreme, were justified. Mark himself remained unrepentant, 
a man consumed by a betrayal so profound it had forever altered him. The courtroom was packed when Mark's trial began. Reporters flocked from nearby cities, turning the case into a media sensation. Mark's lawyer painted him as a heartbroken man who had been pushed beyond his limits by the double betrayal of his fiancée and his father. The defense leaned heavily on the emotional devastation he had endured, casting Richard's actions as predatory and Jennifer as a complicit conspirator. Meanwhile, the prosecution argued that while Mark's pain was understandable, it did not excuse the deadly violence that ensued. They presented witnesses who described the chaos at the wedding, emphasizing Mark's role in escalating the situation. Jennifer was subpoenaed to testify, though she'd been living in isolation since the wedding, staying with distant relatives to escape the relentless judgment of the town. When she took the stand, she appeared a shadow of her former self, pale, gaunt, and visibly trembling. Her testimony was a mix of remorse and deflection. She admitted to the affair but claimed it was a mistake fueled by loneliness and a desire for validation. She painted Richard as the initiator, suggesting that his wealth and power had been difficult to resist. Her words elicited mixed reactions. Some saw her as a victim, while others viewed her as manipulative and insincere. The jury deliberated for days, their decision weighed down by the complexity of the case. Ultimately, Mark was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter, but was given a reduced sentence due to the mitigating circumstances. He was sentenced to five years in prison with the possibility of parole after three. The verdict sparked heated debates across the town, dividing residents into those who supported Mark and those who believed justice had been served. Jennifer, facing no legal repercussions, became the target of the town's collective anger. Her name was dragged through the mud in every social circle, her reputation irreparably damaged. Even those who had once been her friends distanced themselves, unwilling to be associated with the scandal. The whispers followed her wherever she went, forcing her to leave the town permanently. She moved to a distant city, changed her name, and tried to rebuild her life, though the emotional scars remained. Mark's time in prison was both a period of reflection and a test of his resilience. The betrayal he had experienced haunted him, but he found solace in therapy sessions and letters from a few loyal friends who stood by him. Among them was David, whose guilt over revealing the affair weighed heavily on him. He visited Mark regularly, offering support and encouragement. The conversations often turned to the events of that day, with Mark oscillating between regret and a grim sense of vindication. He felt that while his actions had consequences, they had also exposed the lies and deceit that had festered beneath the surface. When Mark was released on parole after three years, he returned to a town that had changed significantly in his absence. The scandal, while still remembered, had faded into the background as new stories and dramas took its place. Mark, however, was a changed man. He sold the hardware store and moved to a quieter part of the country, seeking a fresh start away from the ghosts of his past. He avoided relationships, wary of letting anyone get too close, but found peace in simple pleasures, gardening, reading, and working as a carpenter. Jennifer's life took a different trajectory. Despite her efforts to start over, she struggled to find stability. Her new identity provided anonymity, but the weight of her past mistakes lingered. She cycled through jobs and relationships, never fully escaping the shadow of what she had done. The guilt over Richard's death and the pain she had caused Mark gnawed at her, leaving her perpetually unsettled. She eventually sought therapy, hoping to confront her demons and find some semblance of closure. The town, now years removed from the scandal, continued to tell the story in hushed tones, embellishing details with each retelling. 
It became a cautionary tale for younger generations, a grim reminder of how secrets and betrayals could lead to devastation. For Mark and Jennifer, the events of that day remained an indelible mark on their lives, shaping their futures in ways they could never have anticipated. Though they never spoke again, both carried the weight of their shared history, each grappling with the consequences in their own way. The story of the wedding that ended in tragedy became less about the individuals involved and more about the fragility of trust, the destructive power of betrayal, and the haunting permanence of choices made in moments of anger and despair. In the end, it was not just a story about a wedding, but a testament to the unpredictable and often devastating consequences of human frailty. Years turned into decades, but the scars left by that fateful day in 2002 lingered like ghosts in the lives of those touched by the tragedy. Though Jennifer and Mark had both moved on to different towns and tried to rebuild, the past had a way of resurfacing when they least expected it. Mark, now in his fifties, lived in a quiet lakeside town far from where his old life had unraveled. He ran a small carpentry workshop, crafting intricate furniture pieces that were sought after by locals and visitors alike. The work was therapeutic for him. It allowed him to channel his emotions into something tangible, something beautiful. Despite the peaceful surroundings, he could never fully escape the memories of the betrayal or the guilt he felt over Richard's death. Therapy had helped him understand the depth of his anger and pain, but he often wondered if he could ever truly forgive himself for letting his rage dictate his actions. One autumn evening, as the sun set over the lake, Mark received a letter in an envelope with no return address. Curious and slightly apprehensive, he opened it to find a handwritten note. The familiar curves of the penmanship sent a shiver down his spine. It was from Jennifer. She wrote of her years of struggle, her attempts to atone for what she had done, and her deep-seated remorse. She admitted that she had been too cowardly to face him after the wedding, too ashamed to even try to apologize. But now, after two decades of living in the shadow of her mistakes, she felt compelled to reach out. She didn't expect forgiveness, she said. She only wanted him to know that she had never stopped regretting the hurt she caused him. Mark read the letter several times, his emotions a swirling mixture of anger, sadness, and a faint sense of closure. He didn't write back. Instead, he placed the letter in a wooden box where he kept mementos of his past, a photograph of his mother, a ticket stub from the fair where he first met Jennifer, and a single cufflink that had belonged to his father. That night, he sat by the lake staring at the reflection of the moon on the water and allowed himself to feel everything he had suppressed for years. For the first time he cried, not out of anger or despair, but out of a sense of release. Jennifer, on the other hand, had taken a different path. After years of drifting from one place to another, she eventually settled in a coastal city where she worked as a teacher. She found solace in helping others, particularly children who came from troubled backgrounds. It was her way of giving back, of trying to make amends for her past selfishness. Yet there were nights when the weight of her guilt became unbearable, when she would stare at the ocean and wonder if she deserved the small happiness she had managed to carve out for herself. On day, while walking along the beach, Jennifer encountered a young couple arguing heatedly. The woman was visibly upset, accusing the man of betrayal while he pleaded with her to forgive him. The scene hit Jennifer like a tidal wave, forcing her to relive the pain she had caused and experienced. She approached the couple cautiously, offering a few kind words about the importance of honesty and understanding. They looked at her strangely, as though unsure why a stranger cared, but the encounter stayed with her. 
Jennifer began volunteering at a local counseling center, sharing a story anonymously with those who struggled with infidelity or trust issues. Though it was painful to relive her mistakes, she found that her vulnerability helped others confront their own fears and failures. It didn't erase her guilt, but it gave her life a sense of purpose. Back in his lakeside town, Mark's life took an unexpected turn when he met someone new. Her name was Clara, a widowed librarian with a gentle demeanor and a keen interest in history. Their connection was slow to build, but it was genuine. Clara's kindness and understanding drew Mark in, and over time he began to allow himself to trust again. Though he never spoke of his past in detail, he shared fragments of his life with her, stories of his family, the pain of his marriage, and the tragedy of his father's death. Clara listened, never judging, always offering quiet support. Their bond grew stronger, and Mark realized that while he would never forget the past, he was ready to move forward. Jennifer, too, found a measure of peace in her new life. Though she never stopped carrying the burden of her actions, she found comfort in the small moments of connection she made with the people she helped. It was not redemption, but it was something she could live with. She continued her work with troubled children, finding solace in their resilience, which mirrored her own in some ways. As the years passed, both Mark and Jennifer came to understand that healing was not about erasing the past, but about finding ways to live with it. They never crossed paths again, but their shared history remained a distant, painful echo in their minds. The town that had once been the backdrop for their lives faded into the past as well, and in their separate corners of the world, both tried to build new, quieter lives. Forever marked by the events of that one unforgettable day. In the end, it wasn't just about the betrayal or the violence, it was about how people, no matter how deeply they've been hurt or how grave their mistakes, can eventually find the strength to start over, even if only in small, unspoken ways. The wedding that ended in tragedy had been the beginning of a long journey for both of them, one that was filled with suffering, but also, in time, with healing and the quiet hope of redemption.